He said there was a guy by the name of Simon Magus in the scripture, and he wanted that gift to the point where he says, tell me where I can get this gift. I want to I buy this gift. You know what they told him? They said, you know, your money perished with you. But you think that this can be purchased with money. You see, Simon Magus wanted it for his own glory, his own self. And that is the measure in which we must read people when it comes to the, to the matters of the Holy Spirit. Yes, even in the church. Is it genuine or is it counterfeit? What is the test? The test is who is glorified. Is it Jesus Christ or is it that individual? Or their gift? I didn't mean to, that's not my notes, I didn't mean to elaborate on that. But he was spirit filled. Number four, he was sovereign. We still have that. Yeah, it's up there. Number four. Didn't work the first time. It worked the second time. All right. Verse 35. The Father loves his Son and has put everything into his hands. <laughs> He's sovereign. Everything in his hands. Not in our hands. Calvary Baptist Church is not in our hands. Our lives are not in our hands. They're in his hands, are they not? So God has put everything in his hands. The question is, have we? Who we got to know who he is, ladies and gentlemen. If we're going to be servants, we got to know who he is. Number five under there, Savior. Savior. He's able to save us. He says right there, verse 36, anyone who believes in God's Son has eternal life. Do you really believe that Jesus is able to save? And then finally, point number three. And uh, we'll shut her down. Not only do we need to know who we are not, we need to know who we are. Not only do we need to know who he is. Number three, we need to know why. I finally got to the question why. We're not going to finish it today, but we finally got to the question why. Why we are here. Back to verse 28. He says, I am not the Messiah. I am only here to prepare the way for him. I am only here to prepare the way for him. Now what, what John the Baptist is talking about, this is rather interesting. It used to be that when a king traveled, from one place to another place, he would send people in front of him, and literally, like the scripture says, they would make the mountains low and they would raise the valleys, and it said, Make straight paths. Now, I grew up in the mountains of East Tennessee, and one of the things we enjoyed doing in our cars was straightening out the curves. Now, that was dangerous because the curves really didn't straighten out, we just took shortcuts across them, right, guys? Some of you know what I'm talking about. But he says, no, he says, we would, we would take out the curves. We would, we would just make a straight path for him. But my question is this. How many curves have you thrown Jesus? How crooked sometimes are we? Are you here? Making sense? Prepare the way for him. He said, that's why I'm here. To prepare the way for the king. Remember what they used to say back in the old days? Make way for the king. People were given a choice, King Jesus or Caesar, and they said, we have no king but Caesar. It's time for you and I to stand up and say, ladies and gentlemen, we have no king but Jesus. Amen. Prepare the way. Another way to understand those words, mean they mean to make room. 
make room. And yes, we need to make room. We need to somehow prepare the way so others can come to Christ. And I believe we need to make a greater emphasis on that. But at the same time, folks, it starts with us. We need to make room for him in our lives. And here's the question. Can Jesus live, move, and work in our life? If I'm going to serve him, do I have room in my life to serve him? Or have I filled my life up with other stuff? You know, the longer we live, the, the less stuff we need and want. I, you know. I mean, have you reached to the place now where you get something for Christmas and you think, where am I going to put this? I remember when our children were little, you know, and we We'd, we'd spend Christmas with uh, their grandparents, our parents, and, and then we'd have to load the van up, you know, I have to go back home with the kids and all the stuff. Sometimes they would, uh, we leave some of the stuff here because we didn't want the kids here. I mean, you know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to serve you, do we have room in our lives to serve you? You can take it from there. Hmm. I can guarantee you this is coming from God because these are not my thoughts. You see, we know that in the scriptures that even before faith, we must make room. It's called repent in the scripture. The most first spoken words of Jesus in his ministry was repent and believe the gospel. So but even before he said believe, he said what? Repent. In other words, make room. In Acts 2.38, Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, even before you can receive the Holy Spirit, you must make room. You must prepare the way with repentance. But here's the question. Where do we, where do you, Need to make room. We're to here. Serve, we're here to serve Christ through serving others. Even in the isolation of a pandemic, we must find ways to serve others. Now, let me tell you where the tragedy is. The tragedy is some of us are waiting to be served rather than to serve. You know why some are not here today? Some are not here today because they're waiting to be served rather than to serve. One of my favorite passages, 2 Corinthians 5, 15, says, He died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So we come to the question now, and I close. How can we serve others? How can we serve others? John did it firstly by pointing to the Savior. Jesus tells us to serve others. And I think our focus in 2021 as a church needs to be to explore new areas of ministry. We just passed a budget. We just passed a budget back in December. I don't know the final amount. 86,000 some odd dollars. Administration, salaries, building, you know what the ministry was in that budget? Now that doesn't count missions. You can add missions on top of that. And uh, I think it actually does include, or at least part of it includes, vacation Bible school. But basically it's curriculum material. 5% of our budget goes to missions. But let me ask you this question, where's the ministry, Calvary?
Who do I serve in 2021? That's our question. As I close, would you turn with me to Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25. Many of you will already know where I'm going. Matthew 25. Remember, John was preparing the way for the king, the king of kings and lord of lords. Someday we will stand before that king. And in Matthew 25, 34, it says, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The king will prepare for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you, a stranger, invite you in or need clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. There's the how. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. In 2021, I give you this challenge. In your life, in Calvary Baptist Church, in our ongoing work, let us explore new areas of ministry. For 2021 needs to be about who we serve, not just who we believe. And then, brother, would you go to that last slide like I asked you to earlier, and we'll close with this. Who will, who will we believe in 2021? Who will we follow? We'll be talking about that next week. And who will we serve? That's the question. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Let's stand together.